Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It's our joy to welcome you here today to Kelso. Um, as we record, it's a beautiful autumn day, just the kind that we all love. In the nation, there's a growing concern about the virus once again as the restrictions are tightened. But there's also a concern about us being cut off from those that we love. And so just remember that we are always praying for you, those of you that are particularly isolating at home. This morning, Bob is going to preach and celebrate, and I will lead you through the liturgy of the word, and I will pray. And so we meet in Christ's name. Let us share his peace. We pray together the Collect for Purity, and it's on page one of your blue books if you have that. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Amen. Lord have mercy. God is love and we are all God's children. There is no room for fear in love. We love because he loved us first. And so let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. God, our Father, we confess to you and to our fellow members in the body of Christ that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry. Forgive us our sins and deliver us from the power of evil. For the sake of your Son who died for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. God, who is both power and love, forgive you and free you from your sins. Heal and strengthen you by his Spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. God, who in generous mercy sent the Holy Spirit upon your church in the burning fire of your love, grant that your people may be fervent in the fellowship of the gospel, that always abiding in you, they may be found steadfast in faith and active in service. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our prayers, the prayers of the people. Lord, as part of your family, each one of us, your precious child, we come to you to pray for our world, for those in need, for the church and for ourselves. For your beautiful but troubled world, we weep with you, Lord, when we see on our TV screens heartbreaking images of countless graves dug for victims of coronavirus in Aden in Yemen, those for whom there was no medical aid, only one hospital doctor in the whole city. We pray for their families grieving their loss. We pray for the countries where COVID has had the greatest death toll, 
Brazil, India and the USA. We also pray for Europe as the number of cases escalates. We pray for those devastated and left homeless as a result of the fires on the west coast of America. Lord, in your mercy. Figure out. As we pray for those in need, we have become increasingly aware of the impact the virus is having on those who are starved of touch and of lack of contact with their loved ones. We pray for them and for those who care for them. We give thanks for the Captain Tom Foundation recently established to fund, support and raise the profile of mental health charities such as MIND. We pray for all those whose mental health has been affected by the pandemic. For those living in prisons of fear as restrictions around COVID are tightened once again. We pray for the press that they will report the known facts on coronavirus responsibly and accurately. We also pray for scientists researching a vaccine and for those participating in trials. We pray for those in government taking decisions on behalf of the public health of the nation. May they take into account the well-being of the whole person. Lord, in your mercy. We continue to pray for our young people in schools and for those returning to university that they might rediscover the joy of being able to meet up with their friends again and that in being together some of the impact of having been separated for many months will bring healing. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, now in a moment of quiet, we pray for those we know and love who are ill at this time. Bring your peace and your love and your healing to them as they suffer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Lord, we pray for the church, realising that our buildings for many are places where peace and comfort are found. Places where prayer oozes from the very walls. Places where there can be a real sense of your presence. Places that feel like home. During this pandemic, pandemic we pray that our churches might remain open to be places of refuge and shelter for whoever needs them. We also know that as part of the church, we are called to be agents of your love, justice, kindness and compassion in our families and in our communities. Help us live as your faithful followers. Lord, in your mercy, And for ourselves, Lord, we ask that you will help us recognise the signs of your love for us and that you will give us strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow, as the hymn says. We bring these our prayers to you, our loving, healing and hope-giving God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Jonah in chapter 3, verse 10 to the end of 4. When God saw what they did, how the people of Nineveh turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. But this was very displeasing to Jonah, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, O Lord, is not this what I said while I was still in my own country? That is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning, 
For I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and ready to relent from punishing. And now, O oh Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat down east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade, waiting to see what would become of the city. The Lord God appointed a bush and made it come up over Jonah to give shade over his head, to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was very happy about the bush. But when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the bush so that it withered. When the sun rose, God prepared a sultry east wind and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint and asked that he might die. He said, it is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the bush? And he said, yes, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, You are concerned about the bush, for which you did not labour, and which you did not grow. It came into being in a night, and perished in a night. And should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city in which there are more than 120,000 people who do not know their right hand from their left, and also many animals? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now Bob will preach to us. 